Greetings, everyone. This is Time Rider. I hope everybody's having a great weekend so far. You know, this is the Matchbox number 13C, the Ford Thames Rec Truck. Uh, the model is based on the Ford Trader. Now, Matchbox introduced the toy in 1963, and they ceased sales after 1965. The main variations seem to be in four things. The wheels, which are either black or gray, the decal, which may have an outline around the word Matchbox Garages and may not. The boom, which can have either an open lattice on the top or a closed lattice. And lastly, the hook. Some are plastic, some are metal. There's also one kind of rare one that uses a hook. It sounds like off of another, uh, another casting. And uh, there are some minor variations uh, in the chassis which do not impact the appearance of the model. The Trader was produced by Ford UK from 1957 to 1965. It was called a semi-forward control cab, which as an old truck mechanic, I take to mean that it's not really a COE and not really a conventional cab. I'm gonna restore this one, so stick around. So this casting came from uh, Jordan in Florida. I probably don't give a shout out often enough. It was in really good shape. Mine had the decal with the borders around matchbox garages and the gray wheels. And I've taken to doing it this way just because I think it works better. But you know, if you drill out the small hole while the, the whole post is still intact, I think you wind up with a, a better end result. The front had that little half chassis and what I'm drilling out here is actually the boom. And we'll see if we can get that off. London Transport ordered five double-decker buses based on the trader. The idea being that the lower deck would be used to haul bicycles. And we get that little half chassis off. You can see there's a little tab there that kind of holds the back of it together. Doesn't have any interior, it doesn't have any windshield. And being as I'm gonna have to drop this into some stripper, I need to get these wheels off. They're actually in pretty good shape. The axles look a little rusty. Tap out that front hole. Bob Carter from Trucking TV says they're noisy, have no air conditioning, and cramped up seats. Pretty uncomfortable. And a button screw so I can put it back together later. Bob also said that back in the day we didn't know any better. All the trucks were the same. Yep, sounds like a truck to me. And we need a drop of oil from our Anderson Oiler from TG Wraps in Rogers, Minnesota. And we'll need to tap this out so that we can put it back on later. I over drilled the hole and I wanted to show you that and I fix it a little later. I'll show you how I did that too. And I need to get this pin out. Um, the the boom itself has some very minor damage. But I gotta get the pin out anyway to put a new hook on, so the old hook must have broke. It's bent and there's a very small crack right there. You can see it's bent a little bit. I'm sorry I dropped out of the focus, but I'm an old man and I do that. So I'm trying to pull the, the two sides together again because it, it is bent. And I, I don't want to use baking soda on this or because I don't want to have to try to file it smooth again. It's in a very, very intricate spot. You've heard of whack-a-mole, right? That's whack-a-stripper. 
Ooh, look at that goo. And in she goes. That too. That too. We'll give it a shake for luck. Uh, the stripper took, you know, all the the biggest parts off, but I still needed to get after it a little bit with a pick. Um, you know, one thing I noticed, too, is the aircraft stripper that you buy now has a big warning on it. And I know George has talked about this a little bit, and they changed the formula of it. And it still works, but i got to be honest with you, it doesn't work as well. I find myself having to do this a, a little bit more, which is something that I had to do a lot when I was using... Uh, the citrus stripper, which I, I like, but it just, this stuff works so much better. And, uh, yep, that's fiddly work, getting all that stuff out of the lattice work. Uh, as you can see, mine had the open top, which is one of the variants. Sometimes the top of that lattice is a solid piece. And I can see why they did it, because this one cracked, and it probably wouldn't have cracked if that was a solid piece. I don't know if that's why they did it, but I would think the solid piece would be superior. And we'll get after the cab a little bit here. This casting was in really good shape. There wasn't a lot of uh, corrosion or anything on it. There's a YouTube video of one of these in Uganda. So certainly in its day, it was a, it was a popular solution for a lot of different uh, applications. This one is also, it's kind of like the 29, it had, you know, with that cab in that back, it's, you got to get in there. And there's my crack. Um, and I can't emphasize enough how small this is. Uh, you know, we're looking at it all blown up on the screen, but this, it's really, really, really small. And you can see that the, the boom has a bit of a downturn to it, you know, because of the crack. So... I'm going to try carefully, I might add, because I don't want to break it, to push that boom back up just a little bit. And then what I do in these situations, uh, because I don't want to have to sit and try to file in that little opening, is I'll just take some straight up super glue gel and then using an implement like my pick, I'll make sure that I press it into the crack. and then try to smooth off any excess and I just let it cure right like that. I painted it with uh, the Duplicolor Primer White that I've started using a lot more lately. And you know, it's funny because I've gotten so used to it now, uh, it does, it goes on a little thinner, that I shot something with some Tamiya and it was like I was painting with uh, nail polish or something it just seems so thick I like the way this goes on nice and thin and it gives you a lot of control and the the red that I used was uh, just Tamiya basic red and I I added uh, just a little bit of black to it uh, and you really have to be careful doing that because it'll go it'll go dark on you you know the <laughs> The path to the dark side is the easy path, right? Isn't that what Yoda said? I bet you didn't know that his last name was Leahy Who. But anyway, uh, so I throw on a tack coat of red and I, I don't have a lot of footage of me painting this. It's the same drill. Uh, get the tack coat on and then layer it up. And I finished it off, of course, with uh, Tamiya X35 Semi-Gloss Clear. And then this is something I've never shown you before, but I started doing a little more hammering of axles and I found it beneficial, believe it or not, this is fiddly work, to put a dimple in the end of the axle because it like weakens the edges and gives the, uh, there's some steel to fold over, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but anyway, that's what I do and it works better. And I told you I overdrilled that hole and I didn't have any little washers. Well, this is one of those areas where I think Bondex does a, a wonderful job because I'm not really asking it to hold any weight. You know, all I'm doing is asking it 
to bond to Bondix. And if it comes a little loose when I put the screw in, I don't care. Uh, it's clear, so you can't really see it all that well. And uh, it worked great. I don't have any footage of me putting the screw in, but that's all right. Trust me, it worked really well. And then uh, according to the variation listings, the, the grill and that little piece above the grill are painted. And uh, the bumper is painted. Yes, I did speed this up. My hand is not that steady. What I do, if you watch, is I'll oftentimes I'll, I'll take a drop of paint and I'll set it somewhere where it doesn't really matter. Uh, like in the middle of the grill, like I'm doing right here. And then I can use that to, to dip my brush rather than having to go back to the, the paint bottle so often. And uh, I work... Uh, I work from the middle out generally, but anyway, this is where I wound up. Uh, I think it's a wonderful looking little model. Uh, the Matchbox 13C. Yeah, it turned out really nice. So uh, there will be an episode of the bench after this. And uh, just to let you know, I, you know, I'm participating in this Paint It Pink Challenge and I'm uh, really serious about trying to do more castings for auction and donation and uh, You know, I've told everybody I'm doing a pink Cadillac for the paint to pink But I also decided to do a second casting and that's gonna be a surprise So anyway stick around for the bench if that's your thing Otherwise, uh, this is time writer and I'll leave the light on for you Thanks for sticking around for this episode of The Bench. Okay, so I'm going to get into the G Ain't This Done Yet files. And here's that Mustang with my uh, my favorite G string. Uh, I think the G string is a little heavy. I'm either going to dig around and see if I can find an even finer string. Or I may just do a little file work on this and see. Because I think once I paint it, it might not be quite that pronounced if I get it filed properly. And this is that uh, 72 Mopar product that I'm doing for that buddy of mine. And uh, I just got done painting the bottom again. And I do. I think it turned out way better this time than it did last time. Uh, and it's got a coat of high gloss urethane on it. That's why I'm going to do this one. There's a peek at the other side. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. So work continues on my gasser and uh, I actually I bought a jeweler's saw and what I did is I needed to narrow down this chassis and I needed to tub the back because uh, what I need is I need to get the wheels inside the fenders which you can see I have done. Uh, yeah and then I have this I cut away the, uh, the running board because that looks like how they do these gassers so I got to do something with that. I haven't quite figured out yet. I may run a pipe there or something, try to cover it. Um, but anyway, work proceeds on that. You know, I never wanted my channel to turn into, a, you know, a one-horse show. So I've always tried using different paints, enamels, urethanes, because I want to learn how to do a, a great many things. I can guarantee you, though, my Paint It Pink challenge will include this paint that I got from John at the Redline Shop. Uh, I'm doing my... Uh, Cadillac, my Matchbox Cadillac, and I'm doing that in more of a restoration mode. Uh, and I made a comment about how others uh, schmaltz it up. And I thought, you know, I can schmaltz it up. So I'm going to schmaltz it up too. And I'm sure you've uh, heard me say it along with some others. October 12th, mark your calendars. This is Time Writer. Have a nice weekend, everyone.